Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, real pleasure to be here today uh, to talk about um, the defining system within electric cars, which is, I believe, the battery. Uh, I think we're on the dawn of a, of a new era. Electric cars uh, are proving themselves, proving their value, not just their viability, but their eminent uh, superiority. Uh, but, you know, um, we've been at this for quite a while, long time. Engineers have been making electric cars for over a century now. Uh, this is unbelievably, it's a Porsche. Did you spot that? It's a Porsche P1 from 1898, all electric car. Um, probably ran with uh, lead acid batteries, very limited performance, and was completely overwhelmed by the superiority of internal combustion engines. Well, there have been a few false starts over this last century, and mankind was at it again. Um, a few decades later, um, here with the, uh, a Sebring and, uh, 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 from Norway, a, a Think electric car, and uh, the much vaunted uh, GM EV1. Great efforts, but they were fundamentally stimmied in their capability. And what was restricted the success of these vehicles was one thing, it was battery technology. And you know, if those cars had had access to the kind of battery technology that's available today, they could have been quite successful. But it was just not viable at that time. Now, if we look at um, the, the, the growth of battery technology, the advancement, it's come in a series of, of stages. And this is very much a superficial diagrammatical representation of how we've moved from lead acid technology through nickel cadmium uh, nickel metal hydrides, and today lithium iron has really been the game changer. But you know, I'm, I'm asked repeatedly what's next, and, and the honest answer is I just don't know. Uh, there have been um, a lot of uh, noises coming from solid state battery technologies. It's flattered to deceive. For a decade now, we've been hearing a solid state lithium iron is going to come, it's going to be the great white knight. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, maybe lithium air, we just don't know. And actually, lithium iron technology in some ways is plateauing, but in other dimensions, which we'll cover uh, during the course of this, this conversation, we'll see that there are still some significant advancements to be had. So, really, it's lithium iron that's been the, the breakthrough enabler for a range of viable electric cars that you see here, a Nissan Leaf, uh, an early Tesla, and the car at the bottom, for those who don't know, this is uh, Lucid Air, um, and this is our new electric car, which is really a breakthrough vehicle, not just in terms of the, the battery technology, but the way we use the battery technology as a tool to enable the car, a superior electric car, a next generation car, if you may. Now, um, the uh, explosive growth of electric cars is not just my belief, uh, it's even the prediction of OPEC. This is an OPEC source for uh, uh, an exponential growth over the next couple of decades uh, of electric cars. Uh, this is an OPEC forecast, probably on the conservative side. Now, this is going to need an awful lot of batteries, an awful lot of battery packs. And a lot has been said about the growth of battery technology, uh, particularly energy density, both volumetric and um, gravimetric. But I would contend there's another factor that's really going to make this, this exponential growth uh, uh, realizable, and that is cost. Um, we're seeing a, a very significant fall in the cell cost. This is at cell level, and we're going to see cell costs hit the magic uh, $100 per kilowatt hour, probably by about 2020. Um, this source is the US Department of Energy, but it tallies pretty well with the intelligence we at Lucid Motors have of the future landscape. And um, there's a number of factors driving this, one of which is sheer economy of scale. Um, but um, there are some underlying technologies which are improving, which are also driving this. But I, I would really emphasize that it's this cost, this price, 
that's really going to be the key enabler for the viability and success of more affordable electric cars over the next 10 years. That's what's going to fuel the growth much more than energy density, I believe. So um, at Lucid, we believe strongly in cylindrical, small cylindrical format cells, lithium iron. But there are vying uh, technologies available, which I'm sure many of you are aware of. Uh, cylindrical, pouch, and prismatic. Uh, now, uh, there are different, it's almost like a sort of religious beliefs which, which cell technology you believe in. I'm firmly wedded to uh, cylindrical, uh, both for safety, economics, and energy density grounds. It is, uh, yeah, to me, there's a di direct correlation between energy density and compactness of packs with those companies that elect to use cylindrical cells. Now, pouch and prismatic can flatter to deceive a little bit, and they suffer from uh, surprising characteristics. Both are prone to a degree of swelling. And you have to allow for that in the design of the battery pack. And uh, if you don't believe me, here's some, here are some pictures showing how pouch cells can uh, expand, quite dramatically so. Um, imagine a whole pack of cells behaving like that. It requires a lot of space, a lot of uh, design consideration for this unusual and, and, and rather uh, unwanted characteristic. Now, there's a lot of big claims being made at the moment about uh, cell characteristics, and particularly charge rates and performance. But, you know, I'd liken a battery to a decathlete, an Olympic athlete. It's not about a cell that can be the fastest sprinter or the best marathon runner. We need a decathlete, someone that can shot put, can do the high jump, can do the sprints, can do hurdles, uh, can do a triple jump. And it's the same with different characteristics within a battery cell. And one of the things that we're breakthroughs we've made at Lucid Motors, working with Samsung SDI, has been a cell which has a combination of exceptional energy capacity with a tolerance to cyclic repeated fast charging. And it's a great paradox that even some of the industry leaders today are actually in their cars. Their cell technology is really incompatible with fa repeated fast charging. It, 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 it causes a very considerable and progressive degradation of the pack. And this is particularly relevant for more intensive modes of use that we're going to see uh, with um, uh, the, the advent of um, a, a, a different mobility model over the next 10 years. Now, I've spoken a bit, bit about the, the cells and the cell chemistry, but what I'd really like to do is cover a battery pack design, because really there are, you know, uh, there, are, there are two distinct skill sets and technologies here at play. There's the, the knowledge of the cell and the cell chemistry, and there's the, the expertise of companies like Lucid, who has a core competence in s integrating thousands of cells into a battery pack. And this is uh, 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 an image of the battery pack in Lucid Air. And of significance is the cutaway um, midway along the pack there, you can see. And that allows for uh, the, the space for the rear occupant's feet helps the space concept of the car work. Now, how do we put all these cells together? Lots of little cylindrical cells in a pack. Quite interesting. We can connect them in series, upping the voltage. We can also connect them in parallel to provide a, a, a range of currents. And what we actually do is combine series and parallel connections into a whole matrix array to put thousands of cells together to create a, a system which runs at approximately 400 volts and can produce up to 2,000 amps. Now, um, I think it's uh, appropriate that at this forum we cover the sort of new model of mobility that the world is experiencing, this convergence of the electric car, connected car, um, ride-sharing phenomenon, and autonomous driving. And we're really going to move from uh, an era where cars 
are pretty well owned and driven to, uh, from the bottom left-hand corner here across to the right-hand upper corner to a model of shared autonomy where autonomous driving cars are partly shared, partly owned. And I believe in that the electric car is uniquely well adapted to this new mobility model and incredibly synergist. If we look at um, different charging um, uh, processes and, 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 and options that are available today, it's very interesting to compare these with some of the claims that are being made by certain companies in terms of charge rates. So let's go through these. If you look at a sort of a level one charger, um, typically just about 1.2 kilowatts. For a typical electric car, that can actually charge at a rate of about four miles an hour. It's a sort of brisk walking pace. And we move on to level two. Um, uh, often capped at about 6.6 .6 kilowatts, although available up to closer to 20 kilowatts. About 6.6 .6 kilowatts would charge an electric car pretty much at the speed that a good fit cyclist could cycle along a road, about 20 miles an hour. Um, however, um, the, the charge rate is deceptive because it's actually the charge rate in terms of miles an hour is largely a function not just of the battery chemistry, but of the size of the pack. And with Lucid Air, our largest pack size is 130 kilowatt hours. And that actually enables us to charge at about 650 miles an hour. So really, the speed of a jet airliner. Interesting comparison. Now, these are real figures and uh, lacking some of the the hype that's out there for, for, for charging in, in, in matters of minutes, which really is the, the domain of uh, super, uh, um, um, super capacitors rather than batteries as we know them. Now, I mentioned um, the breakthrough that we've made uh, regarding our tolerance to cyclic fast charging, and this graph represents that. It compares our cell technology with a well-known market leader, and it shows the rate of degradation of uh, a battery pack at a cell level when subjected to a number of fast charging cycles. And you can see here that the, that the market leader is down to about 70% capacity after only about 200 fast charge cycles, which could actually happen within the space of a year. That's quite a shocking uh, um, figure, and this is from our own lab data from in-house in Lucid. And I think that these sort of um, often ignored metrics are going to be so relevant to this new era of shared autonomy. Um, we're seeing that through um, a battery packs in electric cars can be part of a national energy grid system and their ability to store energy and balance the grid is another fascinating, um, mouth-watering opportunity for us as an electric car company. Now, here's an example of how battery technology is really making an impact. These are lap times for the Isle of Man TT motorcycle races. And in blue, we see the, um, the impact that electric motorcycles have made in just the last few years compared with the progressive advance in lap times over a century from internal combustion engines. Another great example is Formula E, and the latest battery packs in Formula E will be double their current capacity, and those new packs will go into racing uh, starting next year uh, in season five. A real breakthrough allowing a pack to last a full race distance. So uh, I think it's clear I believe in battery electric cars. I think that's the future. I think uh, it's interesting that Toyota have done a fuel cell vehicle here. Uh, BMW put so much effort into hybrid cars. I'm sorry Toyota and BMW got it wrong. I think these are technical blind alleys. I think the future is in pure battery EVs, and I think Lucid Air is a best exemplar of the next generation of this genre. Thank you very much.